<sighs> kia ora whanau. Kia ora family and friends, and kia ora anybody out there who's going to listen to this. It's one of the more serious uh, videos I, I'm doing. I don't like to do serious videos <laughs> too much, you know. Well, the talking heads ones, anyway, I, I like to remain upbeat and, and funny and all that sort of stuff. But hey, sometimes we have to do what we have to do, especially when it's something as serious as, as this. Anyway, some of you may or may not know by now about this and, um, and what's going on there. Now, this article just came out today and I'm not a big fan of David Ferrier, uh, as many of you know, <laughs> not a big fan of David Ferrier at all. Uh, but this is a story that I have personal knowledge about, and uh, some of the damage um, that Mr. Hickey has caused. Uh, the Spirit Festivals in themselves, for those of you who are familiar with the Spirit Festivals, uh, are no longer to be held on the Ariki estate, and Franco Hickey otherwise known as Francis Yates, has uh, been removed as the director of, of the estate. As someone who was involved in many of the meetings held either by Zoom or on the Fenua, I started to raise concerns about the financial position of the estate and where that money was going. Initially, there was no financial statements but after pushing back, the management team finally released those statements, and it didn't look good. Now, I didn't personally have any investment in the property. I had no intentions. One, I didn't have the money, um, but a friend of mine did. Uh, they were struggling to make the monthly mortgage payments and were continually having to go back to the finance company and ask for an extension. Uh, the person in this article, not not Franco, but if you read the article, uh, the person who was owed money, one of many now, uh, supported my query and submitted the contract between herself and Mr. Hickey. I was shocked at what I saw and I told my friend to pull her investment, um, but instead she doubled down. But this is my position in terms of some of the practices that take place out there. And much of what I warned about has come to fruition. The whenua at 4127 Kaipara Coast Highway is tapu. It has a rich history in terms of the wars that took place out that way. And some of the underhanded deals that took place way back then. And so when we learnt of that history from the Komatra who blessed the place, uh, but obviously had no idea of the things that were taking place there, i.e. what the Spirit Festival was about and the Gnosticism, is that how you say it? Gnosticism? <laughs> type practices that took place out there. I warned my friend that a gateway had been opened to a realm that none of these people actually understood very well at all and that the Fenua was now tainted and that bad things would happen because of it, and that if it continued, it would only get worse. I was led to believe I was paranoid, delusional, and sometimes even jealous. Yet here we are. It was suggested by some that it is only easy to just close that gateway, but it is not that easy. Those entities are now roaming, not just the Fenua, but they are now attached to those who have been through that place and to those who reside there. Did I miss something? Ah. There are many people, there are maybe two people there who I know personally, I know a few people there, who in my opinion have any integrity at all. And I'm sure they mean well and that what they are doing out there in terms of building a sustainable community is for the well-being of the community they serve and a model for many others as well. 
and in a small way are trying to distance themselves from Mr. Hickey. The solution, in my opinion, demand Mr. Hickey return forthwith from his world tour to face the music and answer questions kanohi ki te kanohi, face to face, with those he has hurt and accept whatever the consequences may be, even if it means selling his Tesla and the spirit bus and home with a flush toilet. All Gnostic practices need to cease, or things will only get worse. And because of the scale of this, asking God to take control, and those on the whenua asking Jesus Christ into their lives, then there may be a chance for the whenua to heal, and for those who carry those entities to be released from the stronghold on those they cling to. I pray and hope that the new directors take up my challenge and see that when I first raised my concerns that they came from a good place, a place of knowing and understanding and my love for God and that he had always gifted me with discernment even as a fresh as believer in the power of God's word. You know, the whenua out there is a beautiful whenua. It is a beautiful place. And, um, and I loved it out there. I really did. Um, and, and, and a few months ago, uh, when me and my ex-partner broke up, I was posting about what was going on out there. But then I was led to believe that I was paranoid and I was delusional and that I was jealous in some way. I don't know how I was jealous. I was never jealous of uh, Franco. Um, but I just knew. I don't know at the time how I knew. And it's always been my journey through life of, you might want to call it having an instinct about people. And my ex-partner will tell you this. I've always had a knowing of people and discernment for people, discernment for people. And it is only since I gave my life to God and started following him in a big, big way uh, that he bestowed a power on me that I don't necessarily, you know, like or have a, a liking for. You know, and, and as an activist, as a Previously, as an activist, for those of you who know, I was down in Wellington uh, for 23 days. I'd occupied the space at Master Point Oil Refinery for 187 days. I'd uh, infiltrated the refinery and, and, and didn't get caught. But as an activist then, uh, when I used to do this sort of stuff, you know, when it comes to um, calling out people online, and it was all about calling out people who were just doing dumb shit, just dumb stuff, um, stuff that was in many ways irrelevant and not even worth my trouble in many ways. But then I gave my life to God and he turned my life around and he made me a very different man that I am today. And I'm sure that if my, uh, when my ex-partner sees this video, she'll see that. I mean no harm. I mean no disrespect. And that, you know, when a friend sent me the initial post a few days ago about what was taking place, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep at all. Because for me, it was validation that I was right all along and not for the, for the, for the fact of being right, but for speaking the truth. And that is all it was about was speaking the truth. I didn't know how I knew the truth. I just knew I knew it. 
but it was coming from a place that I was already on a journey to, just wasn't equipped for it. I've always known God all my life, but I just never, you know, Rob wanted to do what Rob wanted to do. And um, after the breakup of my relationship, after denying God through that relationship, and God isolating me so that he could work on me, um, it was very transformational. And just in the last uh, 24, 48 hours. Also, this is not a personal attack on Mr. Hickey himself. Because I know, you know, we swap stories. And, and, and now I sort of, was he telling the truth about some of his stories? I've heard seen through others and other people posting and talking about the stuff he's been through. Uh, I don't know whether they're stories they've heard from him or whether they were actual stories that he told me were truthful. Because mine certainly were. I opened myself to him as well. He knows uh, a lot about me and my trauma and the trauma that I suffered. So is his trauma real? Was it? I'm not questioning it. I'm just asking. Is it real, bro? Do we share the same trauma? You know, when when you go through healing and you give your life to God, it is instantaneous. When you open that door and let Jesus Christ in, it is transformational. Now, that doesn't mean, woof, and instantly I'm healed. But it is a process that happens very quickly, and the more you accept Jesus Christ into your life, and the more that you accept God is real, and that only He has control over what happens in our life and how that um, evolves and that we have to step out in faith and trust him uh, until we accept that he gives us the free will that's how much he loves us he, he pines for us to turn to him but we make that choice as individuals we make that choice we can either accept him or deny him. And since uh, I accepted him into my life, I pray and hope and wish that I'm never ever put into a position where I ever deny him again, ever. And I denied him for a time because I fell in love. Because I fell in love and I fell in love not with the wrong person but I didn't fall in love with God that's where I should have stayed that's where I should have kept my focus I should have kept my focus on God and what has happened over the last 24 hours 48 24 48 hours has been supernatural it's all been supernatural but in particular the last 24 48 hours it has been supernatural so this is not a personal attack on mr hickey it's just a uh, time to man up brother time to reach out to god Ask him for forgiveness. Look at the blood of a lamb, of the lamb, Jesus Christ. Ask him into your life and he will change all of this. And you know that what's going to come. You know you're going to get a hard time. You know people are going to hate on you. They are already. You know, and in a small way, I blamed you. For some stuff that happened if I'm going to be honest the breakup of my relationship but it wasn't it was all on me but at the time 
I was blaming you. And it wasn't your fault. It was all mine. But this is what it's all about, brother, is taking ownership of the things that we are responsible for. Owning it. Taking it on the chin. Taking the blows. And just asking God into your life and transforming you in a real way. Hey, 20, 30 years you've been into this stuff, bro. Did it really bring you any healing? Because it, to me personally, it doesn't seem that way. And it never seemed that way to me. But he can change everything for you. You just have to ask for forgiveness and face the music, brother. Face the music. And it will change. It will all change in an instant. Anyway, that's me, Fanny. That's me. And um, just a little to all of those at Ariki Estate. I hope and wish you all the best in your endeavours. Um, but until you do those things and give up those things uh, yeah things will continue to be fine for a time they will just remember you know and I've always said this to you you know who you are that the devil disguises himself as an angel of light so things may be good for a time they won't last forever unless you ask Jesus Christ into your life and accept God into your life. That's just the truth. The truth, I've always said this and you know it, the truth is the truth. 